passed by them in 1998, which stated any entity in Santa Fe could put in their own electrical generation, use the waste heat in their own facility, this is mostly um, hotels and so forth, and feed the excess power into PNM's lines with no discretion by PNM. This is a radical thing that we had written up in 1998. What Wayne Shirley had done before that, and the PUC only took care of electrical rates, of electrical. He had put down, he had heard a rate case from PNM. It took a year to hear. He declared at the end of that that PNM owed the ratepayers $124 million. PNM went to the state legislature and said, run him out. And um, Representative Brian Sandell from Farmington took Wayne Shirley to the Supreme Court for malfeasance in office. Wayne had to fight for his political life. Then you had the PRC created, the elected five-person body that you have now. When they came in, their first thing they did, they, did, they hadn't even said hi to one another. I don't think they even knew one another. They destroyed, they stopped that net metering ruling. That led to DREG. When we went down to fight DREG at the state capitol, I went in to speak to one very progressive congressman from the South Valley in Albuquerque. We found out he was hiding behind the door rather than speak to us because PNM would be unhappy with him if they heard he had been speaking to us. Our biggest ally was the most conservative senator in the state at the time named Billy McKibben from Hobbs. We knew that people were going to be totally screwed by DREG. One, the state legislature was handing PNM about a billion to a billion and a half dollars of our money, giving it to them straight up. Then they were allowing PNM to run the distribution and, and transmission system on a discretionary <coughs> basis. What we discovered is that every dollar you paid at the time to PNM. 85 to 90 percent of it left the community and went to Wall Street. That's who owns PNM. It's major Wall Street companies. What we do under a um, regulated monopoly is we pay off all their stuff every year, and then we do it again. We never own it. That's one reason a, a muni grid has got to be put into effect because a muni grid could take all the money we're given to PNM and put it back into the health of the system. So PNM right now, they even the figure 85 percent was based on the fact that they had a few people in town who did work in town. They don't even have those anymore. PNM now, and this is this is spooky, and this is a whole other discussion. They're going to be absorbed by Trace Amigas. They're going to be absorbed by national energy corridors, which have so much power that we don't even realize it yet. Nancy Seawall, a friend of mine in Texas, has seen her ranch totally destroyed by what's called CREZ, the Canadian River Energy Zone. Under the Canadian River Energy Zone, you have no right to protect your water, your land, anything. RITA, Renewable Energy Transmission Authority, which was passed by Bill Richardson in 2000, six, I think, or seven, probably even later, declares this. That put into law that New Mexico has given up its rights over energy corridors. Um, Rita has the power to declare um, eminent domain anywhere in New Mexico. It has no authority of any other state agency whatsoever. And it has the right to issue unlimited revenue bonds. Again, when this was happening, my friend Russell Greider, who was a extremely conservative rancher from Clovis, was working as a bill analyst on the Republican side. And he called me up and said, this is the worst bill I've ever seen in my life. And it was Rita. Rita then gave rise to what's called Trace Amigas, which is a hub for national energy generation and transmission right now in Clovis. I, I, I hate to go there. You asked a very simple question. PNM is a very bad outfit 
they're about to get maybe a hundred times worse if they're absorbed, and they will be absorbed into Rita or into Tres Amigas. One of their main backers for a while was Bill Gates. He owned 10% of BNM. He's dropped out since. I don't really know why. But that's where, when we look at power consolidation, big power now is consolidating into national energy corridors because no one has any say over what they do at that point. And they don't pay royalties. They still pay royalties on oil and gas. There's no royalties paid on electricity generation. So, uh, and again, that underlines the importance of a locally owned grid. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to me, it goes without saying, you know, because you can we can produce much better energy locally. So, who are they donating to? On that? They're donating. You know, what we found out was all they have to do. <coughs> with half the legislature is give them a dinner with wine and write them a birthday note or something. That's all they do. We were actually pissed off at our legislatures when we were going through this process. We were about to get them in a room and say, look, if you guys are going to be corrupt, get corrupt. You're giving PNM a billion and a half, at least get your part of the action. They were giving away their rights for $500. Now, they hit the top five guys. They had Michael Sanchez somehow really, really controlled. We never knew how. Where Michael Sanchez and Bill Payne, his counterpart on the Republican side, carried the um, carried the DREG bill all the way through. We don't know what they gave them or what kind of hold they had over them. Mostly they'll give two, three grand if it's an important person. If it's not, they won't give them anything. They only give money to where they need to do. But now what's happened is with Rita, we're seeing a whole new series of power players in there that are bigger corporate players. Jeff Sturba, who went from head of PNM, now heads the largest water utility in America. And one of their places that they run the water system for is Clovis. So he's seeing that water is a big play in power. It's, it's this. It's consolidating now. Um, that's. Did that answer you? I was wondering if some of the big boys there in uh, Washington or from New Mexico are they getting money from P and M? Like you know, um, yeah, yeah. P and M doesn't influence. P um, the all the electric utilities work through what's called ECRI, the Electric Power Research Institute. That's the nonprofit that gets through membership about two to three hundred million a year. They carry the water for electric utilities. Their EPRI knew in 1997 that combined heat and power local generation was what was going to kill regulated monopolies. And that's the law that we passed in 98 would have allowed combined heat and power with free access to the grid. And that's why they killed it. I think PNM engineered PRC because they can control five elected people who don't know anything about what they're doing much better than they could non-political appointees. Speaking of elected officials who don't know what they're doing, our local legislators, Rep. Egoff and Senator Worth, they've supported Trace Amigas, and they say that's because it'll increase renewable energy. What Jeff's pointing out is that Trace Amigas, all they had to do was say, this is about getting them. New Mexico's renewable energy out to market. That's all they had to do. I, I fought, I fought Rita actually the legis legislation by myself for three years, and I hated doing it. I made bitter enemies with Ben Luce, who was the head of New Mexico Solar Energy Association, because he kept telling me this is all about renewable energy. I kept saying it's all about nuclear energy and oil and gas. You can't push renewable energy very far down the line. It has to be harvested locally. Ben finally came around. It was fascinating. He created an outfit called Break the Grip, which was Governor Richardson had a thing called Grip. And he came out four square against Rita. He was working in the back rooms, and he saw something. I never heard what it was, but he saw something so bad go on that he jumped to our side. And as he moved out of state after that, I'm sorry I took up your time. <laughs>